Greetings, Tony Mobley here, and we're back with a new conversation with Conversation with Tony Mobley. And tonight, tonight is a special night because I have a panel of people who are working in streaming houses of worship services. That's right. And so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. So why are we here? We're here because life has provided me the opportunity to have real conversations with real people. First, I want to thank Mr. Jason Seip for our conversation last week. I want to thank the team behind Conversation with Tony Mobley. And so, again, thank you all so much for last week's conversation. And we're looking forward to this conversation tonight. So why are we here? So we're here because this panel is going to be talking about houses of worship and streaming. We hope to help others with this conversation, but I need your help. I need you to go to conversationswithtonymobley.com so that you can register on that website for the Mukana chat. What is the Mukana chat? The Mukana chat is a chat that will let you vote on questions. You can ask your questions and then they can be voted on. They can be voted on up and down. And so we want you to do that. Ask your questions in the Mukana chat, or you can ask your questions in, um, you can ask your, your questions in the YouTube stream. So if you like that, if you like the, like this conversation, if you like our past conversations, we want you to like and subscribe. We also want you to set that bell so that all of the no notifications will be reminding you of upcoming conversations. And so now our panel, AJ Holmes, Carissa Worthy, David Brady, Rabbi David Paskin, Jarek uh, Parmel, Perm Guy Cochran, and Leo Mendel. And so our first question for tonight is, how did COVID-19 impact your worship services? And so I'm going to, I'm, doing, I'm just going to start with Rabbi David because I'm not able to see hands raised. So well, that's good. I had my hand up, so I'm glad I'm glad you picked on me. Um, <laughs> good. And, and it's an honor to be with you, uh, Tony, and, and with everyone on this panel. Uh, you know, like everything else, COVID-19 shut us down. Um, I, I think what may be unique to the Jewish world that I, I come from, and, and, and perhaps also to, to smaller churches, is we had zero experience with providing any sort of uh, digital prayer uh, experience to our congregants. Uh, the idea of streaming services was, was just almost unheard of. Um, and everyone had to very, very quickly shift and figure out how to get this done and how to continue serving our populations. It was a real challenge but a lot of places uh, really rose to the occasion and they're embracing this moment. Thank you. AJ. Um, I would think for us, um, it kind of um, validated some of the stuff that I was doing. I was talking about getting our church prepared for this maybe in 2014, where everybody thought that this was a nicety that wasn't really essential at all. And when COVID hit, it was like, um, hey, uh, that, that stuff that we thought was silly, um, thank, thank, thanks for putting it in place. Garrick. Yeah, um, I can relate to AJ there. Um, by the way, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, 
Tony. Um, but we had we've been live streaming uh, at a um, at a capacity for since 2012 with multi cameras and things like that. And so it was something that we were doing already and that we were um, versed at doing. And so when COVID came around, um, you know, we were more interested, we were worrying about how do we use it better to engage people at home. Um, we were worrying about um, how do we do it safely and, um, and a lot of, um, and how do we do it so it just, it's stays on, it doesn't break um, with every, everybody being online and everything. So um, in the end, it became very important that they, they, they realized that it was a really great thing that we've been doing this for a long time and we've been um, practicing, so to, so to speak, at, at doing this well. So that way we could really um, serve our, our community and our, and our um, membership. Fantastic. David and then Leo. Yeah, uh, thanks, Tony. It's, it's interesting being on this side of the camera instead of the other side, as I usually am. But um, <laughs> I just wanted to say that it, in the faith where I am, so the New York Buddhist Church here in Manhattan, um, our sangha or congregation is a little more aged, I think. And uh, as such, we, we kind of swung into panic, not panic mode, but I, I had gear that I just brought in dropped on premises and worked with our resident minister and caretaker of the building. And the three of us for the first third of uh, 2020 um, put together a program and we haven't missed a beat since March 15th. Uh, it's been pretty fortunate in that regard. And the Sangha has appreciated it in that not everybody is here in Manhattan. They're traveling from all over the tri-state area here to, to, Sea service, and now they can do it from the comfort of their home. Fantastic, Leo. Hi, Tony. Thank you for having me on here. Um, I just wanted to go back a little bit, uh, slightly different, but um, <clears throat> uh, a couple of years, well, about ten years ago, a friend of mine had uh, a problem with his back, and he ended up in hospital. Um, and he is a very religious person, and he was lying in hospital on Sunday and he couldn't actually go to the one thing that he wanted to do, which is be in contact with his church. And to me, I sat there and I thought, this is just madness. This is just absolutely madness. We have this technology out there and we don't use it. And I, like David, uh, work in the Jewish world. I work with synagogues. Um, and I just went, why, why do we do this? And I got involved in doing it and then bringing it forward to when COVID hit literally when we went down to lockdown in the uk i jumped out and got synagogue streaming because these people everybody's sitting there at home without the ability to actually do the one thing that sort of grounds their lives and that's why i got involved in it and i've seen an amazing change and transformation in synagogues that have been adopting this and getting on and reaching those people that are sitting at home or were and will continue doing it and i'm going to throw the ball to guy and then carissa sure yeah for the first couple months we just were in complete lockdown the church wasn't prepared and so uh they scurried and found uh, a couple pieces of the puzzle and encoder slash monitor with the yolo box and i'm a retailer and I i've been doing this for years helping churches go from standard definition to hd but our our house worship um didn't have anything and so they got a yolo box and a ptz camera and they're off to the races and it's gone every weekend for a year and been solid but just one camera one encoder simple setup and gets the job done and people are happy i mean a lot of people especially the elders elderly just have a fear of going in and even though we're wide open now there's just some folks that are just like i'm not going I'm not it's not worth the risk so it's it's video has been a great communication tool for those folks that can't make it in and i, I love going in on sundays and being able to be that conduit to help those folks that they want to stay home and, and still um, you know, get their, get their faith on. <laughs> Thank you, Guy. Carissa? So I am um, currently helping my grandmother's church, which is not located where I am, um, but it's in Macon, Georgia. So 
they have an older congregation who may not be um, technology savvy. And they went a while, a little while before, uh, right after the start of the pandemic without having that contact or service. And so they reached out to me um, to start having it. We originally started just using the phone um, for services. And then we wanted to be able to see each other um, each and every Sunday. So then we moved to Zoom where we are, which we have currently been doing for the past year. Thank you. Next question is, what are some of the streaming services that can be used for worship? AJ, and then Garrick. I mean, technically you could um, use anything um, you really want to. I think that's the advantage of platforms that um, this has allowed everybody to be creative and like Twitch. Twitch is a service that most people would do video games on, but it's it's a platform that takes video and it can be served to different people. There's another guy called the Digital Pastor. He ministers to, he plays video games, but he's using that as a platform to, to reach other people in that area. You still got Facebook, you got YouTube. We use Vimeo. Um, I mean, there's so many platforms that is, is, it's like you literally got the pick of the litter. You can almost pick anything and it doesn't matter what the genre is used for that platform. It can be used as a tool to share ministry. Anyone else? I would say that, um, that first try and find out where your uh, audience is already at and meet them there. I think that's important. So if you're, if your um, members are mostly using YouTube or something like that, then um, then try YouTube. If uh, if they're on your website more than anything, um, then you know, figure out a way to stream to your website. And there's there's tons of of places out there that will um, that, that will help you stream. I've I've used uh, churchstreaming.tv and um, before, and and they were really great. And um, they knew the needs of, and this is, you know, um, not trying to plug or, or sell anything. We don't use them anymore, but, um, they're in tune to what a house of worship needs. So they have people on, um, support ready for any problems on Sunday morning. Some streaming services don't offer that. They, they, you know, they're not going to be around to help you on a Sunday morning or whenever, you know, your house of worship is meeting. So um, trying to find a place that um, is in tune with your needs and when you're actually streaming would be um, my suggestion. But there's, there are, there are tons of streaming places out there and a lot of them will let you um, um, use it for free for a month or two and, and you can test them out. But um Resi is a good one. It, it's a higher end one that a lot of people are using. We use High Vision as a streaming service. Um, Vimeo, YouTube, there's a lot. Thank you, Garrick. The next question is, what are, what are your suggestions for houses of worship just getting started with this? How about David? So let me first apologize. It seems like my audio seems to be not wonderful, and I apologize for that if that's the case. Um, I, I would suggest that you not start with the tech at all. I, I would not even, don't even think about cameras or microphones, but instead ask yourself, what's your goal? What are you trying to accomplish in doing this? Um, do you want to engage your congregant? in the experience. If that's the case, streaming to YouTube or Facebook may not be the best option. Do you want to produce the highest quality um, uh, audio visual experience? If that's your goal, using Zoom may not be the right platform. So start with what are my goals? What are our goals as a community? And then use the tools based on that. And the only other thing that I'll add, if it's okay, Tony, is um, Please don't create a TV show. Uh, you know, we have all been trained when we're sitting at home on our comfy couches that, that watching something on a screen is a passive experience. 
experience. But that is not what prayer is supposed to be. Prayer is a full contact sport. And so we need to make sure that whatever experiences we're, we're offering digitally, that we're focused more on the, the interaction, the, the participation, participation, the connection, the, you know, the, the back and forth, the give and take that can happen between people, between the pastor, the rabbi, the imam, and the, and the congregants, and amongst your members. That is what's going to, going to last. That's what's going to grow your community, not a fancy camera. Thank you, sir, for that. Uh, David? I, I would, uh, I agree with everything Rabbi Paskett says, but also if you're looking to get in the game, just get in the game and don't worry about um, the Hollywood production elements of it. When we started out, it was rudimentary at best and it improves week after week, month after month, and hopefully year after year. Um, so just get in it. Just do it, as they say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, David, for that. Uh, are different technologies needed for different faiths? And that comes from Talak Lopez Waterman. Leo. Um, fundamentally, in a way, they aren't but the way of delivery is very different it can be very different so what do i mean by that um you know we're all trying to do and deliver using similar technical technology equipment uh similar microphones but there are very very different ways that services look and feel and there's also a different way of the reaction so what do i mean by this a good example is in in catholic services Pretty much it works on a fixed camera basis or most of the ones I see are fixed cameras because you're at the back and you're and there isn't that much interaction. Uh, other uh, denominations will have a far more interactive experience. Um, and, it, and you've got to find the thing that works for you. You've got to find the thing that's comfortable. Remember, the idea of this isn't to change or produce something that isn't uh, different. It just shouldn't be alien to your worship followers it's something that they should feel com familiar with and grounded with and if it feels right to you and it feels like it's something that you've just brought online even though that is a different product um, it should feel right authentic worship that's what i'm hearing you say and it doesn't yeah, have authentic to however your religion delivers worship and, that and the be technology should not get in the way yeah yeah so uh Garrick, and then um, Rabbi David. I just want to echo that, that the, it's, the most important thing is to know your membership or your congregation or who you're streaming to. Um, if you don't know them, you don't know the, the style, the, the things that, that they, you know, are in, you know, just you got to know them. You got to know your church. You got to know your church's style. And all of that has to match. And I think that's where authenticity, authenticity, I can't say it. Uh, uh, man, what is that word? <laughs> authenticity. Anyway, authenticity. Um, authenticity. Authenticity. That's where that authenticity comes from. Is a deep knowledge of of uh, of who your audience is and and meeting them with the technology that you have um, and and bringing them along and trying to really create an immersive environment online that that they can feel comfortable worshiping in their own way. And uh, Rabbi David, did you have your hand up? I, yeah, I, if it's okay, I just wanted to jump in. Uh, it, both of those answers made me uh, reflect on s uh, another piece of this puzzle for me, which is that, um, and, and I'm not sure, I want, I, I'd actually be curious to know if, this, if other faiths feel the same way, but f from the Jewish perspective, one of the biggest mistakes I think that we've made in this transition and the technologies that we've chosen is that we've tried to take what we always did in our synagogues, in our sanctuaries, and just duplicate it on, on the internet, which I think in most cases has been a terrible mistake. Um, you, you can't just offer what you always did in a, in a new 
uh, on a new platform, in a new format, and expect it to still ring true, expect it to still have that authentic feel that it does when you are physically in the room. Uh, I don't know if that's true for other people, but but that's one piece that just jumped out for, for me. AJ, and then Garrick. I would have to agree exactly with Rabbi as well. It's like I like to call it is, it's, I consider it kindergarten to add a camera in your system, in, into your worship. That's, that's good. But we can do more. We, we, we have to meet people where they're at. And then one thing that um, uh, a, a reverend in our group said as well, too, that we don't just focus on the congregation and our members. There are some people, God forbid, and unfortunately, they're never going to be allowed to come into a church at all. There are some people who have had mistakes in their life and they've turned them around and they're in in prison and they're legally not able to come into a sanctuary. And we need to not make them feel like outsiders because they can't participate in a regular service or we don't want to have the faith, our uh, the message of communication, a relationship with God be restricted to unless you conform to this box. You're not going to get the full experience. And where we need to meet people where they're at, because it, is it more of in tough talk? Is it that we're trying to broadcast a country club or are we trying to have people understand a relationship and develop it on the level where they're at? Because if they can't come in, just like if you had um, leprosy, you had to stay outside the city. Are you are you limited to where you can't have a relationship at all because of that to happen? Or do we have to offer it in a different way that's palatable for the people in their given situation, instead of telling them to conform to us, we meet them at their need. Leo. I love listening to AJ. He's great. Um, the thing is exactly that. We've had, we've been exposed to something that has rocked our world. It has made us change what we were doing but it has actually made us realize that some of the things we were doing were really, really rubbish. We were absolutely ignoring people that were there. They weren't coming in, as AJ was mentioning. You know, we were literally saying, we're going to throw you out because you don't meet that. How many houses of worship have put accessibility at the top of the list? Virtually none. You know, it's still loads of steps. It's still a big problem. Um, to get people in and you're sitting there going now nobody was in and you realize why that people were walking away from you and now you have the opportunity to say okay we meet you where you are it's not the best way that we want to meet you but at least we're meeting you and I think that's a critical point Garrick and then a guy <clears throat> yeah the um, the I love that Part about meeting people where they're at and because there's a lot of people that are online and uh, a lot of people who are hurting and, and needing um, a message of comfort and and belonging um, I think that <clears throat> the biggest thing that houses of worship have to tackle and the biggest problem they need to solve in the online streaming world is how to help people feel and be connected because we're um, we're people, we, we're human beings that desire connect, being connected. We we desire community, and um, figuring out how to make that all happen for people online um, is a super important thing, and it's not easy to solve at all. Um, I think it's going to be a long time before someone figures it out because I don't think just watching a live stream and then being able to chat with other people on a website is is quite enough and um i think that um that there's got to be some other ways that um we can draw people together in community um, i don't know if a guy has something to add to that well i was just thinking about the the tools because i, I watch a couple different faiths and and uh i marvel at some of the sophistication that goes on uh, leo showed me one of the behind the scenes kind of uh a shot of some scriptures where it was like a document camera or something along those lines and I was like that is so cool to be able to read along and so part of it is this visual reinforcement so we've been 
over the years, I've seen different house of worship use pro presenter to have the words for the songs appear. And that that's just really nice to, instead of having to pull out your scriptures or your hymn book and, and follow along and get to that page really fast. It's nice for a technician to be able to just drop that stuff, but it, it requires planning. And a lot of us are just volunteers and we're not, we're not going to a rehearsal. So it's, I marvel at some of the sophistication of like Eric's, um, uh, sanctuary where you know you see really nice cameras vera cams with fujinon lenses that you know it's like a seventy thousand dollar camera and they got multiples where we're scrounging or along with one you know two thousand dollar camera which is a really nice camera for us but it, everybody's just at a different level so it's it's always interesting to see the uh you know just how much people want to put into uh you know something like uh an auto mix i, I noticed my mom sends me this the, the catholic service every morning and they could really use a, a Dugan auto mix because the guys constantly, they just leave the mics open and, and he coughs every morning, you know, like it, and it goes through as another person's talking and yeah, just like that, David. Yeah. Do that again. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's amazing to see that how the technology can help or operators, skilled operators, but it all just depends on how far you want to go. And, and guy, can you just say very briefly what pro presenter is for people who pro may not know? Yeah, ProPresenter is just like a, a keynote or a PowerPoint type slideshow software, but it's more than that where you can load in graphics so that they overlay so you can key them out so you can have, you know, the choir singing and then the, the words below and you can have it karaoke style coming coming up. And they also have a lot of cool um, royalty free imagery. So if you if you don't want to show uh, the congregation, you can just show like a nice sunset picture with the the images over the top and it's really quick to pull up passages so the bible's built in um, i'm not sure about some of the other works uh but it's fast and that's it's purpose built it, it is a little expensive they have a couple of different levels depending if you need key fill and things like that because it could actually take advantage of more sophisticated cards like the black magic uh deck links with uh, dual sdi okay great thank you guy for that uh what are some low budget options for houses of wor worship just getting started and I, we kind of talked on it a little bit before. Uh, AJ, you, you started to raise your hand and you kind of pulled it down. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw the ball back to you. Well, I mean, I, I think just what everybody is saying is true and answers to that question. Start with what you got. We've started, originally we started with a Logitech um, C920 webcam when I first started this in 2014. And I was able to get you far. You, there, there are five dollar apps that you can get to turn your iPhone, your tablet, your Android phone into a camera. And I mean, that's five dollars. And everybody at this point, everybody has some type of smartphone. So the, the barrier to entry is pretty low. Um, and then even kind of like um, Guy, I believe when you're saying about ProPresenter, my church uses ProPresenter as well, too. But there's also worship extreme that has a product called presenter that does the exact same thing and it's completely free as long as you have an internet connection you can put up bible wow. scripture and all that other stuff and it runs on mac linux windows a chromebook i mean in, i mean you could like my daughter has a chromebook for school you can put it on that <laughs> if, if need be um there there's tons of free options that are out there it's just the willingness to look and that's where I like to talk about it. It doesn't cost millions to do this stuff. It, you just need to have a willingness and there's something there that will match any budget. David. Um, yeah. Our camera of choice right now is currently the little, little Mevo start. I think it's called it's a little all in one single camera encoder streamer, and it has some rudimentary presentation built into it. So we're still using that to this day. Um, and it gets the job and the message out. So it's pretty well worth it. I think about 400 bucks retail. Carissa, low budget. So we are um, using Zoom right now. Like I said, when we started, pretty much um, the congregation did not have the technology. So we started off just on the phone. Um, I can't remember. I think it may be Jitsu or something like I can't remember the name, but um, using just starting on the phone and then we moved to Zoom. Um, and currently now everybody has uh, moved to having devices, whether it be the phone or having an actual laptop. So we are able to now um, 
see each other and interact um, during our services now. So I do agree, definitely meeting them where they are and then gradually moving if you're able to. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, we'll go to the next question. That is, it is now time to stop streaming worship. So is it now time to stop? Do we need to stop now? Leo. No. Why? <laughs> Why? Because we've got people in. We've had the opportunity to see. Um, we shouldn't. We shouldn't just sit here and say this is the one thing. It is time to think about how we make those services both connected online and offline. It may be that some services shouldn't be both. Uh, that some things are going to work better in one place and work in others. But we just have to remember that 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 online bit is the portal in for those people who were sitting in hospital beds before this. There were people who, because of their age and their mobility, couldn't actually come to services. And we had been ignoring them. And we had been saying, yeah, yeah, we'll send somebody around to see you. That's fine. But actually, all they wanted to do was just feel normal. And part of that being normal is to be able to be involved in that service in that community. So if you want to walk away from your par your parishioners, stop streaming. If you want to continue being connected to the people that you serve, keep doing it. Eric, and then uh, Rabbi David. I mean, you can really look at this as a mission field. And um, we see so many people coming to our church and saying that they first checked us out on our live stream. And they've been watching for a month, two months, two months, something like that. And th they were watching on live stream and then they decided to actually step into our building and try coming online or coming to church uh, in person. Um, we're in person now, but um, so this was kind of more so before COVID, but, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a mission field and you can really reach people and I don't think we would say, is it time to stop sending missionaries out? Um, it's, we are providing um, something that not only serves the congregation we have, but it's reaching people who are looking for a church or a church home and looking to try out a church. And so I really see it as a mission field more than, more than just a, um, you know, a TV show. Yeah, I, I want to add, add to that too, because one of the jobs that I've had in the past was working as a minister for evangelism for a congregation that I was a part of. And one of my primary functions was to, um, and this was kind of <laughs> frowned upon, but um, you're talking about uh, in the 90s, I was pushing for us to do virtual services at that time for our college students and for our membership that were in the military. And it was just something that, you know, just didn't go over well. And it wasn't something that, um, that was well received. But, I, but I, I now see that that could have been even more impactful to the connection of the membership if they were embraced in this way, be it at college or in the military or, um, you know, it's just, it's just amazing that, you know, the opportunity that we have now to re really to be able to reach out to people. Go ahead, uh, uh, Rabbi, I'm sorry. No, not at all. Um, two weeks ago, my mother had, um, was taken to the hospital. Uh, she had to have emergency spinal surgery. Um, I spoke to her earlier today. She has, for the past week, been watching and praying in services all over the country. She's been attending all of my classes, which are all streamed online. Um, so no, don't stop. Whatever you do, do not stop. Spread God's word in whatever way you possibly can, uh, because there are people like my mom who are yearning for it. 
and they can't get into your church, they can't get into your synagogue. So, um, you know, preach it from wherever, wh whatever microphone, whatever podium, whatever pulpit you have, um, do that and, and, you know, spread that word. Carissa, then Guy, then AJ. Um, I agree. Since I've been helping um, my grandmother's congregation, I have gone there face to face and um, we have been able to reach more um, being virtual. Uh, we have more attendance of the younger congregation. Uh, so I do definitely agree that we should continue with the virtual uh, because we, like I said, have been able to reach more um, and even more that are not in our local area. So I think it's a great idea to continue with the virtual. Guy. Yeah, they were asking for numbers to see how many people are watching our streams and our numbers weren't super high. But when I went to talk to some of the people out, out in the field that were viewing and get their feedback, they were saying, oh, oh yeah, it wasn't just our family, it was another family. So we had nine people. So even though only a, a single digit popped up on the screen for our back end. It was actually nine people. So I said, for every one, it's more like three because it's normally a, a family. And so I'm like, don't don't stop. I have proof right here that we're reaching out to people. And, and some people just have kids that, you know, they, kids will be kids. And so sometimes it's hard to get them out the door to get them to go to church. And so to be able to still let people be in their home, uh, curl up in their bathrobe if they need to that day because their kid was having a bad day and throwing a tantrum just let them still get their heart touched by by being being virtually there so yeah i'm i'm a i'm a big fan i'm a believer so i, I think it's going to stay at least it, well i think forever I don't, I don't think it's going away aj david i, I would have then to read by david I'm then sorry. garrick yeah i would have to agree i mean the scripture says you know the great commission is to go to the highways and hedges not tell everybody to go to the benches and pews and tell everybody to come in. The idea is, and I mean, that was kind of like where we had termed a coin, I mean, coined the term e-missionary, where we're digitally sharing God's word with people we'll never meet. There's somebody that needs to hear that message that as much as I want people to come to Richmond, Virginia, they're not gonna be able to. Why would I be selfish and hold the message that's changed my life and the barrier of entry is, hey, you got some type of connection and you're in um, Bug Tussle, Wisconsin, or you're in Sydney, Australia, and you just happen to come across this, why would I shut that down when, just like everybody said, it's a missionary field, you're able to share. So instead of me paying for a plane and hotel tickets to fly all over the world, I can turn on my phone and we're sharing the message why would I want to stop doing that when that's what our calling is? Fantastic. And one of the things I just wanted to share too is that I read an article not too long ago that was talking about um, this, this um, um, very vibrant congregation that had embraced the virtual um, services and their membership like tripled and it was that the membership was growing from outside of the local area where the church was. The physical location of the church was no longer a, um, a, a, a reason to join that particular church. It was the engagement, the thing that we've been talking about all along in this conversation tonight, that this membership tripled and also um they were actually able to do more ministry because their donations their giving increased as well and so I, i'm sorry i i just wanted to get that out um was it rabbi david was next then garrick and david <laughs> I just wanted to, uh, I have a pet peeve, and I've heard a few people say, use a word bef uh, th in the past uh, conversation that throws me for a loop. Uh, there is nothing about what we do that is virtual. Virtual means kind of like, or almost the same. What we do is as real as it gets whether we're in the pews, whether we're in the roomagog or the zoomagog, as we call it, uh, uh, you know, in, in the Jewish world, it is real. And I don't want us to 
minimize the, as we were saying before, the authenticity and the, uh, the passion and the power uh, that we can offer using this on these platforms. So um, I, I always, I suggest at synagogues that they always talk about digital services rather than virtual services. Um, and I've just heard a, a few of us use that term. I probably did also. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Garrick. <clears throat> a couple of things I wanted to touch on. One uh, to you, Tony, was that, um, you know, Vehicles, cars, and highways, interstates allowed for people to move out of their neighborhoods and away from and, 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 and choose a church that they wanted to go to instead of, you know, half, not halving, but I mean, it sounds, it sounds a little weird, but it became like a chance for people to go to a church that maybe met their needs differently than the one that was in their neighborhood. Um, and so that was a technology that changed how churches uh, uh, brought people to their congregation. And I think that the online um, world, the, the I won't say virtual, Dave, <laughs> um, but the uh, online world is, is also um, another technology that is impacting churches um, in some ways good and, 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 and also can in some ways bad. But the, the other thing I wanted to touch on was with um, um, Guy's comment about um, more than one person watching. Um, I don't know how many people do this, but we um, kind of look at our congregation and, and see how many families we have and how many single people we have. And, and we go, okay, we're comfortable adding a factor of 1.7 to the number we see online to give us a kind of a more accurate picture of, of who's watching, how many people are watching. So um, it, it's definitely uh, something that we do to kind of judge, um, you know, the impact we're having with our, with our live stream and how many people are watching. So that's, um, that's a little something that we do to, uh, to kind of get a better picture of our numbers. Oh, uh, Leo, then David, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna be really quick on this. Um, I don't think numbers matter. Uh, one person, 100 people, 1,000 people, does it matter? Does it matter how many people you reach? Does it? Does it? Why does it have to be a numbers game? If it makes a difference to that one person, then it's the most critical thing you actually did that day. Um, I have this with numbers that say, oh, we're not going to continue in here. Our numbers are low. There's only 10, 15 people watching it on here. It's like, but since when? was this a numbers game it was always a personal game and if you're reaching those people even if it's small numbers keep reaching them david and the other thing that has been kind of miraculous if uh, if that's not too strong a word to use is just the the reach in that streaming service has um i look at the the locations where people are tuning in from we've got hawaii in the list japan italy france you know, all from finding a keyword that we put in there and they're tuning in. And that in and of itself um, is reason to continue streaming because the word is getting out there. Thank you, everyone. The next question is, can, can the way that conversation with Tony Mobley happen the way it's being done, can you do that in a worship, a house of worship? And I'm going to throw the ball to Guy because he's probably the one that can answer that question. It, it all depends, as Mickey would say. Uh, it just depends on the style. I can imagine if it's um, like a, a teaching, um, like seminary type thing where there's a lot of back and forth. Um, our style for ours is more of a spoken word where it's the typical pastor gets up and delivers and so uh, i would love to see you know more audience feedback but it seems like for our the way that we do things it's it's a very there, there's two different things seminary is like a different thing that's that's where the the there's interaction but for the, the sunday services it's pretty much like we are uh, in the online audience the second class citizen because it's more like you know you're just watching a show 
basically. They'll look at the camera every once in a while, but for the most part, they're not really talking to us except for when they say, all right, we're going to end the broadcast. <laughs> Bye to you guys. <laughs> so, uh, but it would be fascinating to see if, if they would put like a virtual screen in and invite some people that, that can't make it and, you know, do the mix minus to where they can bring people onto a stage or onto the big screen and uh, talk to somebody that's in that hospital bed because I think it would be impactful because I, I love stories, you know. I, I, in our services, we have a lot of stories, like it's a lot of metaphors, a lot of, a lot of stories. And so it's about that connection. And I think that for the people that can't make it in, uh, especially the folks that are just really petrified of COVID, I'd love to hear from them. And I think that we're missing a lot of those stories. AJ. Yeah, I've actually helped quite a few um, ministries who have transitioned into this type of hybrid service. Um, one of their names is escaping me right now, but this pastor has a laptop set up with ProPresenter and other software like that to where they're bringing in, he will stop in the middle of his message to entertain a question in the congregation, whether they're physically there or digitally there. And he'll bring up there, they also have a TV that's in the back that they'll have Zoom and they can see everybody who's there. And they have it to where if they're talking on Zoom, it can be, their audio can be brought into the house and they're treated just like anybody else. Um, and I've seen a lot of ministries do that. I've seen other ministries have their own type of, um, for lack of a better word, a show type of thing to where they're brought in and um, in a different way to meet the congregation. Then they meet together digitally and physically to have service. And then they have an online um, type of pastor that interacts with them and have like ushers call for the discipleships. So it, it can be done. I, I've seen it and it's been very interesting. My home church doesn't do that yet, but it's, it's awesome when I've seen that. That was the first I ever saw it and I thought it was excellent. Rabbi David. I, I'm all with everyone on the interactivity and the conversational piece. What's interesting about conversation with Tony Mobley is the, really the back end, what, what's happening behind the scenes, and uh, the fact that this is all being run, as far as I understand, by volunteers. Um, I can tell you that in the Jewish world, this is a real challenge right now, who we get to switch our services to to manage the zooms to, to do all of that behind the scenes work that we feel will benefit the the product that we're putting out there the experience that we're creating for people um, i was just talking with a congregation today that you know they really don't know what to do because they just don't have volunteers who have the wherewithal to stick with it and, and do this every weekend um, they don't have the funds to hire people to do it. And so they're, they're in a bit of a quandary. And I, I don't know that we've actually figured that piece of it out yet. Very cool. Next question is from Roscoe, Roscoe Jones. And so he said, his question is, has leadership embraced or supported streaming and encouraged its growth or expansion within organization or have they been challenged to educate david um we recently had a board of directors meeting a few weeks ago and i put a proposal in for upping the game a little bit which was approved under the auspice of bringing in the youth to try to get them encouraged to help produce things. So, um, yeah, I would say, yes, we have been embraced and they see the value in that it adds to both the service and the outreach. So it's a win. Leo. There's a lot of clergy that I meet that, uh, have been doing a job, doing an awesome job for a very long time that has suddenly been thrown this curveball. And it's difficult and it is super difficult. It's difficult when you work in a room where you are uh, expecting to see people and everything you work on, the way you deliver your presentation was built around the reactions that you got there and suddenly they're not there. Uh, and it's scary. It's scary that they're doing something that they didn't feel comfortable with. It's hard. Um, it has opened opportunities for some 
uh, it has also meant that some have retired. They've literally gone, that's it. I didn't sign up for this. This isn't how I do it. And it's time to pass the ball to somebody else. So I don't think it's a just g generic answer of yes, it works or yes, people support it. Um, I think from a technical perspective, I've tried to be there to help where I can um, and to simplify it. But others have loved it. And I think it's just, um, I think it's something that we're going to get used to and we're going to have to see how it flows. And the people that were really awesome in the past, maybe they just won't need to do this and they can stay with what they're doing as things change. You know, I, I, I kind of, uh, I, I have mixed feelings about it from the standpoint of I'm, I'm a person of a certain age and I understand how pastors um, or leaders, church leaders in the past have done things, you know, so to echo what you're saying, Leo, and that they were so, so their perspective of what they were doing in their own eyes was that it was effective. And I'm not here to say whether it was or was not, but that is what they were used to. And because they were used to that, it is difficult for a lot of people to embrace that. And I, I don't know, you know, it's already been said, I don't know that we need to push particular congregations in any one direction or, or not. You know, it should it be all online or all, you know, in person. I, I don't think that that's realistic at this point. I think that we need to continue to try to do both as much as possible to, to meet the needs of that particular congregation or house of worship that we're dealing with. And um, it's kind of like the conversation that we have on Saturdays in office hours with, um, with schools. And there is this this knocking together of heads because a lot of the schools and um, school, school systems want things to be the way they were. And they, they don't want to embrace this whole idea. And I'm sorry, I went off and into all that. Uh, AJ, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, I completely agree. Um, and I think your, <laughs> your comment made me almost forget about what I was talking about. But I mean, I think the importance of that, I, I've dealt with both sides, and I like to say it this way, a toe makes a horrible heart. A heart makes a horrible lung. And lungs make horrible kneecaps, meaning that there is not for one person to be able to handle everything. Instead of, instead of me, I'm, I'm a swordsman. I make a horrible spearman. You know, in other words, you don't need to know everything, but that's the reason for delegation about you have your your leader of whoever's handling media ministry or whatever capacity, as long as it's communicated to like, you know what, you don't need to understand this. Just know that I'm in alignment with the vision of this house to help share the message. And if you just want to preach and do what you're used to, that's fine. Let me help in this capacity to reach out all of here. Now, like I always tell, like I tell my pastor and stuff like that, you don't have to change anything. I just want you to do one thing. When you say good morning, say, and also for those who are watching online, thanks for joining us. And then you continue doing the same thing that you normally would. And we'll handle all the technical, you know, but then if anybody's interested, we're willing to share that as well too. I, I think that it's very much to ask everybody to pivot in such a way to learn all these skills that change hourly and just leave that to somebody who is proficient in it or even willing but then it can be an, an enhancement instead of i can't do it because i have to do it all myself <coughs> guy yeah that just reminded me of another request that i had recently and it was to record an audio version of one of the the classes we have something called the second hour where you go to your classes and um they asked me to record them because somebody was missing them uh they had to work or whatever there's different different things going on so i brought in a facebook portal 
and the Facebook portal has Zoom on it, and I can hit record on that, and it records to the cloud. And afterwards, I can take that link and I can send it to the Facebook group, and people can watch it. But it made it super simple, so this is a great idea for people that don't want to have like super sophisticated stuff where they gotta get a recorder, get an SD card, take the SD card out, put it in the computer, edit it down. So I do wind up editing it a little bit in Zoom in the in the cloud. You can trim off the heads and tails. We call it the beginning because the beginning is mostly just people talking, and then they get right to to the the discussion.、Um, But it's been a fantastic device. They're like around two hundred dollars for a, a Facebook portal, and it's camera, microphone, plus basically a computer, a, a purpose-built、uh, Zoom device. So that's one thing where I'm trying to get them to buy them because I'm just bringing mine. I bring my Pelican case every Sunday to church. <laughs> I pull out this this thing and I set it up for them. But、uh, I'm going to ask them to buy their own because it's getting to the point where some Sundays I can't make it, and they're like, "Can you at least bring the Facebook portal for us to use?" And I'm like, "Get your own." <laughs> <laughs> Carissa, um, what was the question again? It was, it was <laughs> about、so、has, li- has leadership embraced and supported streaming, and I'm, I'm sure you can speak to that. I definitely can.、Um, our leadership has embraced, and I'm quite impressed with them to say that they、um, have embraced and they are making those changes that need to be made to ensure that we have.、Um, Great worship experiences each、um, Sunday and Thursday night. And Thursday night, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay.、Uh, a next question is: Oh, did somebody that somebody have their hand up? Did I miss somebody? Okay. All right. The next question is:、um, What are the? I thought I asked this question. What are the types of streamings that are being done? David, well, aside from our service, which is on Sundays, and it's more of a webinar, one-way type of communication, we have、um, a few other events that we'll do on Zoom,、uh, basic、uh, study sessions once a month or twice a month on Saturdays. Wednesdays we have a guided meditation thing, so we're kind of embracing the tech as best we can and leveraging it how. To the best of our abilities, yeah.、Um, but those are the two main, or three main,、uh, avenues we're doing. Rabbi David. Yeah, I would only add to that.、Uh, in the Jewish world, it's、um, in the liberal Jewish world, I should say, it's services、uh, on the Sabbath and on holidays.、Um, for t- more traditional Jews, we actually don't use electronics on on the Sabbath and holidays, and so they're not able to stream.、Um, But it's a lot of classes,、um, fundraisers, and、um, mm-hmm. uh, some of the best that I've actually seen is coming out of the Orthodox world, and it's a few Orthodox rabbis who are starting podcasts and starting streaming shows and talking with other people and and just really upping their game. It's really inspiring to see. Eric. Yeah, we do.、Um, of course, our Sunday services, and um, then um, for a while we were doing it more regularly. But now we do probably、uh, every quarter we do what we call a house worship, which is、um, a more scaled down kind of time of music and prayer、um, with a pastor and, and a couple musicians. So it's more of a smaller kind of intimate setting.、Um, of course, Zoom classes.、Um, I'm getting ready to do a webinar. With a for a fast and pray event where it's more、um, a select few of people, not open to everybody. So, you know, doing all sorts of、um, of things out there, and a lot of video on demand stuff too. David and then AJ. Yeah, the one other thing I forgot was our、um, fellowship. So, in our the faith I practice, we we would have fellowship after service where people would bring food and would be great with all congregating. Have a good conversation,、um, and we miss those tuna sandwiches. So we were doing all our fellowships over Zoom after service on Sundays. AJ, well, I think outside of everything that other people have mentioned, I mean, we kind of changed it up a little bit. I actually did a、um, Bible trivia game show that was interactive with people in、um, Facebook for the chat. So I would throw up questions, and people could interact. So it was just. 
Bible study with a twist and made it kind of more engaging because um, we did it before when we were in person and had people have to eat hot wings when they didn't very hot spicy wings when they got a question wrong made it fun but we just transitioned that online and made it more engaging have done online scavenger hunts where people had to find certain things inside of their house so made it still learn but still had a fun element to it that's that's going to be used i can tell you right now that's going to be used someone's going to use that carissa go ahead um, I was going to say as well, we we have our um, regular Sunday worship um, on Zoom along with our Thursday, whether it's prayer or Bible study. Um, we are doing that. But like he just mentioned, we are doing other things, uh, being able to do other things that we would normally do if we were uh, face to face, like having skits. Um, it, game night or some type of inner form of entertainment um, around holidays and that kind of thing where we can still interact um, with each other if we were in the house of worship. Okay. All right. The next question is, are houses of worship experiencing Zoom fatigue? And is that a real thing? <laughs> Leo. So I think everybody will suffer fatigue of something that's happening um, on a regular basis and that is continually, that isn't evolving. So yes, I think there is that. Um, you can't eat the same meal every single day of the week. You can, but you'll eventually get fatigue from it. So it is hard, um, but I think it's something that we are gonna go and push through. We're gonna find what works, what doesn't work. And if it is working um, and you're engaging, then people, don't suffer it from it. If it is going to be the only thing, I guess there could be some issues there. David. I'm not sure if it's fatigue per se, but um, it, over the past few weeks, as our song has been coming together in limited numbers, you can see the actual joy in people's faces in seeing each other once again. And I think that's what's sorely missing. Um, from the online experience. Uh, we tried to supplement it with Zoom and having that coffee hour congregation after service, but it's not quite the same as being able to see somebody's eyes smile because they're wearing a mask, so you can't see the, the actual smile. But uh, So, yeah, that's kind of where we're coming from. I wonder, though, if, if engagement and authenticity... Um, can be pushed through Zoom or Video Ninja or Facebook or whatever you're using. Uh, and the reason I say that is because um, most of you uh, who are on the panel are part of office hours. And there is, there is that dynamic engagement of uh, fellowship of people globally. Um, that are able to have a, a great relationship with one another. And when we have those opportunities to actually meet each other in person, it is, it, you know, it's shared and it is a great thing. But um, I think Alex Lindsay would say that um, good audio and good video, but good audio being primary um, are important. And so um, do you have Zoom fatigue if there's good audio and good video, if there is authentic engagement? I'm not answering the question. I'm just throwing that out there. So you guys say what, what, what you think about it. Rabbi David. I, um, I've been honored to take part in a few meetings with Elevation Church's um, digital team. And one of the first things that I learned from them is that 20% of their work is done on Sunday mornings during services. 80% is done during the week, having nothing to do with services. So it's important for us to remember that Zoom or YouTube or Facebook, the streaming of the service is just one tiny component of what it means to engage with people in digital space. 
Um, I, you know, I don't know how many of the rest of you are, are watching, but I'm kind of monitoring the, the YouTube also. Uh, I know AJ is as well. And, and we're kind of interacting with people as this conversation is going on because they're not here. I don't think that people come to church or synagogue just to sit there and passively listen. I think they have voices and they want to be heard and they want to know that they're heard and that they're seen. And so, yes, sitting on Zoom, sitting in front of a screen can get boring. And, and yes, good audio and good video makes up for that. But you know what really makes up for that? Picking up the phone and calling someone on Tuesday and saying, it was so wonderful seeing you in our, in our service this past Sunday or this past Saturday, or as you were saying, having a meetup or, um, uh, Alex, um, uh, talks a lot about, um, uh, digital first events where you are gathering people together in physical space, but not all in the same physical space. So let's have pray dates. Let's have people gathering in people's homes mm -hmm. to watch the service together so that it's not just about a screen. It's not just about the audio and the video, which are all important. I, I'm not minimizing any of that. It really is about the connection and the experience that happens both during the service and well beyond the service. And I just wonder though, that some people don't believe that you can have an authentic connection through a screen. And I, I'm not, I, I don't have, um, I have my own thoughts about it, but I'm just, I'm just wondering, can people have authentic connections through a screen? AJ. I would say yes, because I mean, I would assume everybody on here has known somebody who's had a long distance relationship where you can only talk over the phone where something, I mean, I'm ha happy birthday Marines. Cause I'm a Marine as well too today. And you know, the idea is there were times where you get deployed and you're gone for two years or all you could do is communicate through a telephone or uh, a message. Does that mean that intimacy relationships and stuff like that can't exist in that medium? No, of course you can. I think the difference with all the stuff that we're doing, all the PTZs, phones, cameras, and all this other stuff means nothing without the human element of showing some type of care. All of the ministries that are assembled right now are exactly the same. The only difference is can you show and are you sharing character, your character, your heart through that technology? I can show somebody just like we're just like um, Rabbi was talking about. We can communicate with people. There are tons of people on my YouTube channel I've never met, but I have a bond with them because of the communication. When somebody's on the live stream, hey, Anthony, how you doing? Reverend Joe, Charlene, hey, I'm seeing y'all again. Great to see y'all. And it's to me, I try and say that that this digital medium is not something to where I can't form some type of um, relationship with you unless I'm physically there. Yes, I want to do that. But if I can't right now, just if I was deployed, I can't, I can't hug you, but I can show you how much I care. You know, that, that anybody can do that because all of us have done that in some way, shape or form, family member at a distance that you can't visit. They can, I don't think they would say that they don't feel that they don't have a bond with you if you're not able to meet with them physically. And I'm going to throw the ball to Guy. I just, I just want to hear your comments on that. Um, that's, I don't really have much to say on that one. It's yeah, I'll, I'll pass. I'll pass that one back. Garrick. Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, you know, we've always, we've always encouraged people to, to join into small, since we're a big church, bigger church, um, we've always encouraged people to join into small, smaller groups. And that's a, that's a very important part of being in our community is that, um, you, you join a small group of, you know, t you know, 10, 10 people and you meet together regularly, um, to form those, those connections. Um, and during the pandemic, those things happened on zoom. And now that, um, we're, um, um, eased up on our restrictions here in, in Missouri. Um, people are back together, meeting together in, in each other's homes. And, um, 
So that's, that's how we've always kind of um, done things is, is encourage people to take that next step to not just come on Sunday morning, but to involve yourself with a small group of people that can gather around you and, and be part of a, a smaller community for yourself. Robert David. I, I hope it's okay. I, I want to uh, give a shout out to Dominic White, who's in the, the YouTube chat. She just made the most beautiful, beautiful comment. I, is it okay if I share sure. that with everyone? Yes. Um, Dominic, I hope, I hope it's okay. Uh, she writes about the question of authenticity. She says, you can definitely be, you definitely can be authentic with a screen that you can see. We are authentic with God who we cannot see, yet we trust and love God. That is such a wow. beautiful reflection and uh, and way to approach that question. Thank you, Dominic. I hope it's okay that I shared that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, the next question is, what are the pluses to hybrid worship? What are the pluses? David? reaching an audience outside of the four walls of whatever your worship hall might contain um, to be able to spread the word as far as the ones and zeros can travel down the wire is uh, pretty impressive when you think about it. Leo and then uh, Rabbi David. So <clears throat> we've, as well as saying we've been going into the future, we've actually gone into the past. Uh, for most religions, they came from somewhere where they actually had to learn and come up with ideas and how concepts of how to deliver what their message. And for the last X whatever years, most of the art, the religions or the main religions have been pretty stable. They've been doing the same thing over and over again. We're suddenly experiencing something that people did a long time ago, which is to learn how to deliver the religion in a new environment. And this new environment, has thrown up some opportunities and it has made us realize what we can do and what we can't do. I see it in the Jewish world that we actually reduce the length of service. It makes it better. Don't tell all the rabbis this. Shorter <laughs> sermons are actually better because they're actually more interesting, they're more engaging, and we've been given that opportunity. So I think hybrid has actually opened people's opportunities to say, we don't just have to do what we did before. Let's see if we can make it better. Yes, AJ. I think it's giving, given a lot of people that um, it's given them freedom. And the reason I say that is there are a bunch of other ministers who have had to dip and dodge and hide their faith because governments will want to kill them. And they've been allowed to share digitally from home and they don't have to have, they don't have to worry about, am I getting ready to be killed because I want to share the message of God, of Jesus Christ throughout the world. It's freed them up to be able to do that to where now it, it, it's, I mean, I don't want to sound redundant, but it's been freeing for them that they don't have to worry about, is this going to be my last message today? Because everybody can't go out. You're stuck inside. Who's going to be out to enforce if you're gathering in this one building that everybody knows that the government is against? Okay. Rabbi David. Um, building on that, that was so beautiful. Uh, building on that, there's uh, you all can't see this at home, but the view that I'm looking at um, actually has Tony and everybody else in the same exact size box. No one is bigger than anyone else. And that's one of the things that I love about Zoom is that my even though I'm the rabbi, right? I'm the one who's getting paid to show up. My box is no bigger than anyone else's box. It's the great democratizer. And I love that creating sacred space in digital space allows everyone to be a rabbi, a pastor, an imam, a teacher, a spiritual leader. We all have the capacity to share, for me, I would say our own Torah, right? Our own sacred <coughs> word. Um, and that, that's really inspiring to me. Thank you, sir. 
appreciate it. Wait, that. you get paid? I'm I'm switching sides. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Okay, and so uh, our next question is, you are speaking to the world. What do you want them to know about streaming streaming services going forward? Engagement? Membership, maybe? No takers? AJ. What I would think is um, everybody has a unique message. It is not my responsibility nor my duty for me to reach everybody on the face of the planet. It is for us collectively to reach everybody on the face of the planet. My message might not reign true with one other person, but somebody else's is, meaning that the ministry and the way that God talks with you to reach somebody else is just as important as anybody else. And it gives you just like rabbi was saying, all of us have an e the phone that you can go get that you probably already have has the same impact and same reach as anybody else's. It has equalized the playing field, no matter what it is. And it's, it's something that I think we need to move forward and just to show that whether you have if it's just you in your house ministering or you have a congregation of 150,000, your message is important and your words may be the only words that can reach somebody. And I just want to add that conversation with Tony Mobley, Tony Mobley is on with an iPhone. That is my camera. So those of you who are watching, uh, I think the, the, the video is pretty good. I'm just using an iPhone. It's 10 S max. So it's not even a new one. And, uh, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's decent. So, um, and the next question is from Roscoe Jones. Again, what are your greatest successes in using volunteers? Where have, where have they, the lessons of the burden, have they lessened the burden on your uh, staff, on you or your staff? Rabbi David? Yeah, as I said before, this continues to be a real challenge in the Jewish community. I, I imagine in every community uh, because um, volunteers want to help. Um, they want to do what's right, but ultimately they're volunteering. It's not their main job. And so if they can't make it that day or if something comes up or if, you know, are they as reliable as, as we hope they would be, it's a challenge. And can they stick around for the, for the long term? Um, I will say that on the other side of it, I hope and I think that for some people, this is an opportunity to participate in worship and the life of the congregation that they may not have ever imagined and they may not have found another way in. Um, you know, they may not be into prayer so much. They may not be into Bible studies so much, but they're into technology. Mm -hmm. They're into video. They're into whatever. And maybe this is a way for them to, you know, enter, enter the gates of our sanctuaries. Um, even if it's just digitally. Thank you, uh, David. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Garrick and then Leo. I'm thinking back to when we uh, installed our system back in 2012 and um, I didn't, I had no clue what I was doing, didn't know how to direct video, didn't know how to switch video live, all of those things. And um, we asked for volunteers and we got, you know, three, four, five, and none of them had any experience at all. And we basically built the plane while we were flying it and reading the manual at the same time, trying to figure it all out. <laughs> and, um, and our team's grown. Um, people have come and gone, of course, but, um, you know, just to be able to see, and, and anybody who joins us there, you, we don't have people who, um, who have experience and the joy comes from, uh, working alongside of them, treating them like family, um, being together and serving and worshiping together in a unique way and, um, and then seeing them grow into 
excellent camera operators and excellent um, video directors. And um, so we have a bunch of volunteers now and, and, and it's just, it's just real pleasant to not work for God, but work with God in that atmosphere of worship with people who are like family to you. Leo. Um, Garrick says some really good points there. Uh, so did David. Um, for me, I, I, I'm in a slightly different way. I actually help uh, set up some of the synagogues. And the plan has always been with every time we've done one or has been is to make sure uh, that the people involved own it. It's their service. It's the people actually involved there have got to do it. It doesn't mean to say that each one is going to come out the same. Um, some people go do it in one way, some do it in others. But when you see that, when you actually see people are like taking it and going and running in a direction and they have learned or as, as Jarek said, that they're actually getting involved, it is just amazing. It is just amazing to see these people that uh, have stepped up. And sometimes it goes wrong. You know, we've all been there. It goes wrong. There's lots of things go wrong. Uh, I keep saying, you know, but nobody's died. Um, <laughs> maybe it's not the most appropriate saying, but it, it feels that way. You know, you get through it. Um, uh, but I'm so, so amazed at how great some volunteers are and how they've done it. Um, and well done then. AJ. Yeah, I, I have to completely agree. I mean, I think my ministry was to the point where I document and I try and do training for media ministries on YouTube for that very same thing. And it it does my heart so well to have people who've reached out to me to where they've started with a phone and it was just them. And now I'm seeing 18 months later that they've taken some of the, the little things that I've stumbled on and they've taken that and multiplied it so much. And now they started with one and they have a staff of seven people or like at my sister and brother-in-law's church to where they started. And now they have their entire media ministry is ran by people from the age of six to 13. And to just to see that, or to even have somebody else raise their hand, say they volunteer and they're running the entire media ministry and they're 87 years old and they're by themselves. It's an excuse for mover. It, it, it just shows that if you're willing, it doesn't matter your age, that it can. And that has been the most fulfilling thing for me. And then just showing that, hey, this is, you just don't have to be making yourself look like a fool online. There is a purpose behind stuff and content that's available. That That's another thing from the wide breadth of ministries from, like we said before, one with one person that's doing something at their kitchen table all the way up to 100,000. I mean, that has been the most rewarding and exciting thing for me. I want to thank everyone so much. We, we have, I'm going to read a comment and then we're going to, uh, we're going to end and I want your final comments and we're going to let Guy go first with his, his final comments. Uh, but I want to read this. I thought it was important. This is from YouTube. You never know who will watch. Don't strip away what may be an opportunity to be part of worship, even if they are not physically there. And I just wanted to share that. Um, I, th I thought that was important. And that was from uh, Dominic White. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And so um, I'm going to ask for your closing comments. And Guy, please uh, play, share yours first, please. Yeah, sure. I mean, I just I feel blessed to be able to have these talents to be able to communicate and be able to use these tools and and learn from others. I mean, I think that uh, we all can start out even just with a phone and uh, you know a basic YouTube account or Facebook or whatever. But then we're elevating. We're we're learning. Like behind me here, I have a PTZ camera, and I know some of the other panelists here have used those, and they're just they're fantastic. And I can't wait for a day when we can you know remotely control these things and. If, if there is another uh, wave of the pandemic where we still can remotely control these things. So, I mean, I, I think, again, it's just a, 
a blessing to have these talents to be able to communicate and, and have the message delivered through us. So, uh, and thank you for having me on the panel. Thank you, Guy. Uh, Leo? So outside of this world of this that we're doing here, I am a snowboarder. I love snowboarding. Uh, the first couple of times I did it, I really hurt myself. Um, but I learned how to do it, and I learned how to do it better. And I now, it's one of the most amazing feelings that I ever did. If you're learning to start, you're starting to stream, just it will be bad at the beginning. Hopefully it won't be that bad. Hopefully you won't end up with a bruise all the way up your back. But um, learn how to do it, and it will get better and you will really reach people. So that's my message. Uh, Leo, can you share your um, your uh, YouTube channel, please? Uh, you, uh, I'd love to share my YouTube channel, but I'm having an argument with YouTube. But you'll find me on uh, uh, the uh, Synagogue Tech Forum. Uh, you can find that on Facebook as well. Thank you. Garrick? Um, it's a it's a pleasure to work shoulder to shoulder with uh, a group of you people that uh, have gathered here tonight. Um, it's uh, it's 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 an honor, and um, thank you for drawing us all together, Tony. Um, I would say that uh, um, you know don't be a, if you're starting out. I'm going to follow up with Leo here. Um, if you're starting out, don't be afraid to reach out. Um, there's tons of people around that um, are very willing to help you. And um, I wouldn't have gotten to where I'm at uh, now without the help of, of many people who uh, graciously gave their time. So um, if, uh, if you have any questions or if you need anything, um, want to ask me a question, um, you can email me. My email is uh, Garrick, G-E-R-I-K, at thecrossingchurch.com. Thank you, Garrick, for sharing that. Uh, David Brady. Um, I just also wanted to thank Tony, uh, the Office Hours Global Community, and everybody here for allowing me to come represent the faith that I practice. People ask, often ask me, are you a Buddhist? And I say, no, I'm practicing. Every day is part of that practice. And uh, when you realize the interconnectedness of everything, this community, and then beyond that and beyond that, it really kind of makes the world a little bit smaller, even though um, it's pretty vast in its space and time. Um, you find our stuff over on newyorkbuddhistchurch.org and New York Buddhist Church, searchable on Facebook and YouTube as well. Sunday mornings, 1130 Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, Rabbi David. Uh, you know how you watch, uh, you binge a Netflix show and you, you fall in love with one or more of the characters and you feel really connected to them. And then, and then the show ends and you, you miss them. <laughs> That's how I feel with so many of the people that I've met online. I, I, I feel this deep connection, uh, despite the fact that I have never met you uh, physically in person. And, and so, um, yeah, authenticity is real and it can happen in these spaces. And so I guess my message would be embrace it. Um, whether that's in, in attending church services or, uh, you know, meeting with your pastor, or your rabbi one-on-one, -on -one, even if it's over zoom or just gathering with, with fellow, uh, synagogue, mosque, uh, Buddhist temple churchgoers, uh, on, on, in digital space, if they're spread out and, and you're not able to physically gather, uh, there is real connection to be had here. Uh, and, and so, uh, take advantage of that. Uh, um, I, I, I will mention my website, but, um, guy didn't mention his because he almost never does. So I'm going to do it for him. Uh, DVE store.com. Um, it really is the place to go for any of the tools that you need to get this work done. DVE store.com. And while you're browsing around, you're welcome to visit Torah tech guy, T O R A H Torah tech guy.com. And if I can be supportive and helpful, I'm happy to be that. You beat me to it, uh, Rabbi. Uh, 
Carissa. Um, I just want to thank you for having me on. And um, I really enjoyed the conversation tonight. I think I've learned a lot. You guys are a little bit more advanced than me. So um, I was able to learn um, some things tonight. And my message would be just continue to do what we are doing digitally. Um, I think, I not I think, I know that we are um, reaching more um, with what we are doing or having to do right now. Thank you. And that's my niece and her old uncle twisted her arm a little bit to get her on tonight. And I appreciate that. AJ, the CEO. Thank you again. Um, this is humbling to be quite honest, to start this off and originally. And when people would tell you, you're crazy to try and when we're telling me that I was crazy to try and do this and then to find like-minded kindred spirits that believe the same thing. I'm so thankful for that. Thank you for the honor of the invite and just really appreciate it. Um, one thing I would say just to bookend all of this is be willing to be bad at first so that you can be better in the long run. You, you, you No child just starts walking perfectly. They fall, they hurt themselves. They stumble, but they keep getting back up. That's all it is. Everything that you're going to go through from a live streaming standpoint, almost everybody in this, in this forum and anywhere has gone through it. You're just, this is just the process. Just be willing to go through it so that you can get to the other end of the, the good benefit of it. And pretty much training for me and everything that I do, you can find me anywhere on social media, YouTube, anywhere as AJ to CEO, A-J-A-Y-T-H-E-C-E-O. Thank you, AJ. Thank you all so much for being here. We have one last question statement that I'm going to read, and then we are going to go to our thanks. And so uh, this is from uh, Brody Hefner, a question prompted by this panel that represents such a variety of faith traditions. Does an online presence offer opportunity for congregations to connect to a wider variety of people? And the answer is absolutely. And thank you, uh, uh, Brody, for that question. And so, uh, again, I want to thank everyone so much for being here with me tonight. And I am, I, I, I am extremely happy with, with this, this conversation tonight. And I think that we will have another one along this line. Um, and as I, as I shared with the panel earlier that we will, we'll, we'll try to be even more inclusive in, in representation in this, in this upcoming conversation. So I want to say special thanks to Kimberly Mobley the Global Family and Friends Office Hours and the Office Hour of Members, Cloud Bedrock LLC, DVE Store, Liminal Entertainment Technologies, Bite Hive, VDO360.com, ApprovedForLoan.com, Mr. Ken Jordan, Jonas Dattel, Aaron Huslich, Sherrock Cheetah, David Brady, Marcus Lee Folk, Richard Lavery, Chris Fenwick, Manolo Lalonzo, Jeffrey Powers, and Talak Lopez Waterman, the CWTM producer, Conversations with Tony Mobley producer. And next week, we are going to have a one on one conversation with Vienna Tran. She is a medical doctor and educator, and we are going to be talking about space medicine and fun. So please join us next week. More interesting conversations with creators, educators, filmmakers, musicians, and more interesting people. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe if you like these real conversations. Thank you so much. Take care. Good night. You have an invitation to participate on Zoom in the office hours which is a part of the office hours, after hours in the office hours community. Take care, good night, take care everyone, bye-bye.